you for joining me, as well as being patient, for this brand new episode of The Lipstick Lesbian. As promised, I'm going to be bringing you details about my open marriage for April. And when I say details, I basically mean who brought it up, how we both agreed to it, and ultimately what I learned, because I damn sure did learn a lot. But before we get started, I'm going to throw out two disclaimers. Number one. There are a lot of people in this world that's into free love, open relationships, and polyamorous relationships. All too many times we're heard that these things are taboo, and they're really not. As long as you do the research and educate yourself as much as possible, and all parties consent, there's nothing wrong with it at all. And if you're somebody that has had this conversation with your spouse, your partner, your lover, don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Do what you feel is going to make you happy because somebody else out there probably wouldn't mind doing it with you. Like I said, educate yourself and get consent. And then from there, you're all in the clear. Number two, this is a no judging, no shaming, no bashing zone. Whatsoever. If you're not open-minded, this probably isn't the video for you. On top of that, I am going to be telling you stories that are going to make you feel uncomfortable. Some of you may cry, some of you may laugh, and some of you might just plain old feel sad. Some of you might listen and just be like, oh, okay, whatever. But still, the fact of the matter is, is that this is my story to tell from my point of view. I cannot tell you how April felt. I can't tell you what she was thinking. I can tell you what I went through with her. And I can tell you the things that she told me, but I cannot speak for her. So if she wants a platform, she's more than welcome to have one, whether it's on her own or actually coming here with me. But until then, please understand, you're not going to like everything that I'm going to say. Do not go on a witch hunt because the same way she's healing, I'm healing, I'm healing, she's healing. This is very hard. These are things that I would never, ever, ever have been comfortable with saying or talking about like I did six months ago. But through therapy, I'm in a better place. And I would just want you to take in all of this and just understand and learn. Just learn. Don't make the mistakes that I made. Because I've made a lot of them in this process. So with no further ado, um... A lot of you probably will be surprised when I say this, but the number one problem that plagued my relationship from the beginning was sex. It was always an issue. Ava would say sexual chemistry this and sexual chemistry that, and I'm like, what the, f what the hell are you talking about? Sexual chemistry. Because I never had a problem. I've had partners and I've had relationships and I've had situationships and it was never an issue. I always had a very, 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 very healthy sexual lifestyle with whomever I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. No lie about that. But with April, it was different. It was much different from the very beginning. The reason why I'm very big on no shaming because I was shamed throughout my whole relationship. And I don't necessarily think that April knew what she was doing. She just was doing. So, um, it started from the beginning with the shaming. When I asked April what was sexual chemistry, she would be like, well, we're not into the same things. And I was like, well, what are you into that I'm not into? And she would tell me, and I'm like, how are you telling me we're not in the same things and I never did that before, but I'm open to try? Automatically. You never did that before. Oh, you're a prude. I never understood how much this tiny word would affect me, and I dragged it throughout my whole relationship. The problem is, is that when I was dragging that, it was shit being piled on top of it as I went along. Mistake number one. Not hearing each other. Not understanding what we're putting each other through. So, um, 
when I say things will be piled on top, April would say I was born in bed. Sometimes she would say I was bed in bed. I didn't get it. One thing I don't do is I don't brag about women that I've been with in the past. I think that it's just ugh, tacky. It's in bad taste. You should not be telling who you're sleeping with about other women that you slept with, especially if you're building a relationship with them. But I liked her and I was I was caring for her and I was falling in love because this shit wasn't happening day after day. It was over long periods of times that it was happening. So we had a great relationship and we were still having sex. It's the craziest part about it. I think for me, it took a drastic turn when, like I said, she would brag about this amazing sex life she had with a woman before she met me. And then I find out deep into our relationship that the only thing she was doing was giving them head. Now, sex is to be interpreted by the person that you're having sex with. But come the fuck on. Really? So now here I am, feeling inadequate. I'm feeling unwanted. What else can I do? What, what more do you want from me? What more do you want from me? I give you what you ask of me. I, I look for new things. I'm, I'm willing to try a shitload of stuff. I would tell her I'm not good enough for you. Like, I, I never feel like I'm good enough for you. And she would constantly say, why do you always bring up the past? That's how she would say it too. Why do you always bring up the past? Why are you always bringing up these past women? Because you brought them up and you gave me this information and you made me feel this way. So what the fuck in your right mind thinks that you, like I wouldn't bring it up. I suffer from anxiety. I suffer from depression. I suffer from fucking low self-esteem. And you just triggered it all in one shot. April brought up the idea of an open relationship and notice that I say relationship and not marriage. That tells you how far back we've been having this discussion. I was just like, oh, fuck, no, girl, bye. But over time, she wore me down because like I said, these things weren't back to back. They were over a long period of time. So I went from saying no to saying, well, if that's what you want to do, I don't want no parts to agree to it. But mind you, in the meantime, she would be on dating websites. The gay community in Philadelphia is not a big one. So how does it look when my girlfriend is seen on a dating website giving out her fucking number? Seriously? Why would you do that? And then the worst part about it is that not once did you actually care about how it made me feel. Because you felt as though what you were doing was okay. And that's the reason why you continue to do it. And meanwhile, our sex life is crumpling. So I agreed to it in the end. But neither one of us stepped out. You know, April would give her number to girls and like it never went anywhere. And um, I think that for me, I believed in my love and I believed in my relationship because I would constantly say, we can make it through this. Like we can fix these problems ourselves. Now I was in denial because April would say, we probably should go to counseling. And I'd be like, girl, no. But I wasn't ready for that because you can't force nobody to be ready for something that they're not ready for. She seen the problems and she understood where they came from. She understood how everything was all simultaneously connected because in the end it is. And if you go to counseling or therapy, you'll understand that it is all simultaneously connected. But I didn't see it and I didn't understand. And so I allowed myself to be in these situations and what kept me there was depression and love. Coupled together, I wasn't going nowhere. 
and I would deal with these issues day after day. Week after week, month after month, we went from having an active lifestyle to having sex twice a week, once a week, once every two weeks, once every three weeks, once a month, once every fucking month and a half. Sex is supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be erotic, it's supposed to flow so smoothly and it just fucking didn't. It felt like a job. It felt like I had to do it. It got to the point where I was number grading myself. Okay, so, um, how, like, how did you think that sex was? On a scale from 1 to 10. And if the number wasn't high enough, well, what do you think I could do different next time? Sex is not a fucking book report. Okay, people? It's not a book report. You don't write a rough draft and then go back and do the right one. It doesn't work like that. But like I said, love and depression. It's one hell of a drug. I just wanted that feeling back that we had in the beginning. I wanted that chemistry back. I wanted those vibes back. I would lay in her arms and feel like there was nowhere else in the world that I wanted to be. There was times that she would walk up to me and hold me from behind. And it was the most comforting feeling ever that died somewhere along the way. And I was just digging, digging in the dirt for that crypt, looking for that feeling that had died. The therapist told us when we sat down in joint therapy that you can do everything in your power to get shit done. She didn't say shit, but you can do everything in your power to fix your problems, but if you don't have the right tools, you'll never fix them. We didn't have the right tools. I'm digging with my hands and I need a shovel. But nonetheless, this continued for some time and the game changer was April 15th, 2017. If you follow me on Instagram, you know, you've seen these pictures. I was just too hot to try. I ordered this sexy dress from Europe. My hair was laid. My makeup was fleeky. I was just dripping in sex appeal. My nails was done on point. I went out and bought a new pair of heels. April took me away and I'll admit everything didn't go perfect, but wherever I wanted to go, she took me. What I wanted to do, we did. And at the end of the night, she took me to this amazing restaurant in the heart of Manhattan. She looked, she looked incredible. I just remember looking at her and just thinking like, oh my God, she is so fucking sexy. I, myself, was getting compliments all night. We ordered couscous paella, a flame juggling belly dance that came out. The atmosphere was perfect. It just dripped erotica. It was so sexy to be there. And the night came to an end and we caught our lift back to the hotel. She didn't want to have sex with me. I remember feeling alone. I felt unattractive. I felt unwanted. I remember asking her, like, do you actually want to be with me? Why are you with me? Why don't you want me? Why am I never good enough for you? 
What am I not doing right? And then she said, you are, you are good enough. I just, I'm, I'm just not in the mood. I lost my fucking shit. Girl, you not giving up no birthday booty? Oh, I've never heard of that before. You, you never heard of birthday booty. Why are you lying? I was so hurt. I was crumbling in front of her and I lost it. You want your open relationship full blown? Now you have it. And to her defense, she did say, I don't think that this is a good idea, but she also agreed to this shit. She probably didn't think that I was going to go ahead with it, but I did. And later on, she did reveal to me that she felt as though at that point in time, I was probably already fucking with somebody. But I wasn't. I did meet this woman that I was attracted to. And when April gave me the green light, <laughs> I rolled in her DMs and I shot my shot. She shot back. So we would hang out at first and you know, we would talk a little bit and she was a little apprehensive, but I'm pretty sure you know what happened. Let me tell you what the problem was. April and I actually established one rule and one rule only, and that was don't ask, don't tell. Now, what I will say is that something ended up happening where April had to ask. She knew that I was going out, but she knew that I was rekindling relationships with friends. She ain't going dirty, dirty, but she did say that she kind of suspected something. But she couldn't put a finger on it. Now, I will say that when I would come home, April would be waking up every single time mysteriously because she was never actually asleep. This she did tell me. She wanted me home. She, she wanted me there with her. She, she wouldn't say it, though. See, the problem with April is, and this is something that she admitted to as well, she cannot convey her emotions properly, verbally. So she's sad, she's at home, she's wanting me to be there, she's missing me. But she would never tell me that. That was a mistake. So when she found out that I was out doing a do, and I was, she decided to go out and do it too. No problem. Cause I'm gonna tell you right now, the difference is, is that the first time I went to have sex with this woman, I was scared out of my mind because I didn't think that I was going to satisfy her, but I did. And then I, I went from having sex once every six weeks or once every eight weeks with my wife to having sex multiple times a night, multiple nights a week, just rolling in a sack for hours. And it was so much fun. Everything I wanted from April, I got from her. I can make that pass. No problem with me. But at the same time, when April decided to do her do, she just, man, it was just messy. Multiple chicks again, multiple numbers, multiple names. And then the hierarchy was not the same, see. My shorty knew the rules. I had more rules set up with her than I had with April, ironically enough. And there was no rules. I mean, April said she discussed these things with these women, but I'm going to tell you right now, shit got ugly. I'm laying in bed one day with April and she gets up and goes to the bathroom. Well, she gets a text message on her phone. It's laying right next to me. And all I did was look at the screen. Now, I did notice the week before that there was a girl that popped up on my Facebook. 
on the people you may know, but we had nobody in comments. I'm like, who the fuck is this? Brush it off. Well, it's the same name and it's not a common name. So I'm like, April, this girl just texts you. Does she look like A, B, and C? And April's like, yeah, how do you know? I was like, it's strange because she popped up on my Facebook. What we didn't know is that at the time, we had a joint Gmail account. So it saved to one phone, saves to another, and that's how she ended up on my Facebook. Now, April tells me, well, she's cool, and, you know, we clicked on a social level, but she's hideous. So, um, mm -mm, no. Don't worry, I'm not going to sleep with her. That was a lie. The lie detector test determined that that was a lie. Because it was a lie. As a matter of fact, me and April are out one day, and this girl walks up to me and introduces herself to me. April doesn't say anything. She thinks that it's okay. Know your place. Know your role. You are not to be seen or heard. And April let her violate that. April let her violate me. These things would continue. Shit spiraled out of control. Why? Because we didn't have rules. You need rules. An open relationship is not a free for all. You can't go out there and do whatever the fuck you want. No. Educate yourself. Don't do what we did. If you love somebody, you want to be with them. Even if you want to explore a little bit. You both want to explore a little bit. You get those rules and you stick to them. Now, I later found out in counseling that our problems were never as big as we thought. It's just that at that time, our relationship was already crumbling. I personally thought, as well as a therapist, both of them, because we sat down with two professionals simultaneously. All four of us in a room. They didn't think that our problems were as big as they thought. They actually can see into April words more than what she was saying. And he was telling April, like, April, like, you know, like, you, you gotta, you, you gotta come around. You gotta slow down. You, you know, you, you gotta do things the right way. You, you gotta fix this. Because you don't want to leave him right here. The love is there. We see it. From the very first time we sat down with y'all, we see it. She didn't listen. My marriage crumbled. And it failed. For me, it was devastating. All because we didn't listen to each other. That's all it took. April would always tell me, you have to be in tune with your partner. You have to hear them out. But then the therapist came back and said, even if your partner says something, your lover, your spouse, whomever, they can say something a million times and you'll never hear them until a professional comes along or somebody else comes along and says it. It all fell on deaf ears because at that point in time, we were no longer listening to each other. We ended up giving each other space. And that space never came back together. The therapist said that this is not the fault of one of us. This is the fault of both of us. And I believe it. Oh. Absolutely, I believe it wholeheartedly. Um, sorry. We don't see the same therapist no more. I mean, in passing, we see them, but we actually have two different therapists now. We're both still at the same, you know, office or whatnot. We don't see each other. We don't have any communication. But I will say that this past week, my therapist asked me, what did you want from therapy with April when you were in couples counseling? And I told her, 
I wanted to go back and see if we can work the problems out. It wasn't that we were going to stay together. It was that we can see if we can work our problems out and then go from there. I know April's hurting. I don't know how much anymore, but in the beginning, she would call me and she would tell me. I feel like I made the wrong mistake. I can't get out of bed. It's funny how much outside influences can totally, totally fuck with somebody's judgment. And for me, I believe personally that that's what ended up happening. That's another thing. Don't let other motherfuckers into your relationship. Ever. So. The moral of the story is. Do your research. There are rules. There are levels. Be comfortable. Be comfortable with you. Be comfortable with who you are. And fucking listen I didn't listen to Ava just as much as she didn't listen to me and I will hope I will hope that you guys understand that when I say your issues from the past whether it stems from your childhood issues with parents issues with friends it follows you and it, it stays with you and it seeps into your personal relationships with other people. I was emotionally abused by my mother my whole fucking life. That's why I don't have a relationship with O'Neal because I don't need her. I'm better off without her. And I understand that. And I live a happier lifestyle. But if I would have known that 10 months ago and stopped letting her have influence over me, I'd probably be a different person. Might even still have my marriage. But things happen and life goes on. So, hopefully you learned something today. And like I said, don't go on the witch hunt. It's not necessary. I'm not going to do a lesbian bite today only because I need time to exhale this whole thing. And I need time to just, you know, breathe and relax. However much time that is, I don't know, but I do need it. Um, I'm probably going to get a lot of comments and questions and stuff like that. So, as always... If you have not subscribed, do me a favor and click the link to subscribe. You guys can reach out to me on Instagram at Mixed Butterfly, as well as an apple from Eve. And um, if you feel like you need counseling, I have some information for you. Free counseling services. So just stay tuned to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time, beautiful people, I bid you adieu. Good night. If you or someone else you know is in need of counseling and you don't know where to start, please contact Destiny Pinkney at destinypinkney at gmail.com. All counseling services are free. She does email conferences as well as half an hour phone conferences. To set up a phone conference, email her first and she'll get back to you at her earliest convenience. Thanks.